Hey there, and welcome to another episode of your favorite libertarian. I'm your favorite libertarian, and this is the Beretta 1301 Tactical Shotgun. If you want to see more videos on this shotgun, you can click up here or up here for the Optimizing Shotguns for Home Defense series. Right now, we're starting off the series with the Beretta 1301 Tactical, but other shotguns will be featured in the series, so be sure to stay tuned to that by, again, clicking in one of those places, wherever that link was for that set of videos or playlist, if you will. And you can also wait until the end of this video, click on that big box at the end. The playlist will be there as well. In our last video, we added a cheek riser to this stock, but this stock is part of a furniture set that is a collaboration between Magpul, between GG and G and Langdon Tactical. So this kit I purchased from Langdon Tactical's website came with all the adapters needed and all the adapters needed here to put the Magpul SGA stock on it. Now, one of the things that I want to be able to do is potentially put a sling on the shotgun. So in today's video, we're gonna be adding the sling mount kit type one for the SGA stock. Before we get started, a little bit of housekeeping. One is that I take prayer requests. So if you have any prayer requests, put those in the comment section along with any comments, questions, or dad jokes. And secondly, if you're thinking about picking up this particular product, you could do that by clicking on my link in the description or in the pinned comment below. That'll take you to all of my links and discount codes. If you use those links to get to those same websites, it's not gonna cost you any extra. In a lot of cases, it's gonna save you money and you'll be helping to support the channel at the same time. If you could do that, that's awesome. And you're awesome. All right, with no further ado, let's get on to the actual video. And now it's time for everyone's favorite portion of the video. What's in the box? This is the portion of the video where I show you what's in the box. So here is how the sling mount kit comes. This is the type one. There is a difference between the type one and the type two. The type one is if you want to have this QD mount on one side or the other. The type two is if you want to use it in conjunction with the type one so that you can have ambidextrous sling mounting options so you can have one on each side. So first we're going to go ahead and show you all the packaging as if you care. If you want this exact product that is the SKU and all the numbers and everything that you might need that's a picture of it and it tells you what it is for. So that's that. Go ahead and open it up. Alright so here's what you get with the kit. You get this piece, this is what the QD swivel is gonna click into. You get one, two, three, four, five different length screws, and then you get one nut. You're going to pick the screw based on which stock you have. Magpul sells a bunch of different stocks that this QD point will work with, or QD attachment will work with. So you have to look at uh, maybe this document right here, and it'll tell you which one of these screws you will need for your particular stock. For the SGA stock, we're gonna figure out which one is the correct length, and then we'll get to the installation part. First thing we're gonna do to install this new part is obviously make sure the shotgun's unloaded, but after that, remove this cover. Okay, I finally got this piece out. It took a little bit of doing. There wasn't anything online, which is probably why you're watching this video, wasn't anything online to show me how I was supposed to remove this, just that it said, step whatever, remove this thing, and then it was removed. So what you have to do is you have to get a flathead screwdriver that's small enough, fit it into this hole, and then just pull the whole thing out. I thought maybe uh, there'd be something that's part of this little line here that's a tab that you have to push into the hole to pull the whole thing out. Not the case. This is all one solid ring all the way around. So there's really nothing you can do other than that method I showed you get a flathead into that hole and pull the whole thing out until it pops out and in my case flies across the room. But that's how you do that and I made sure to do it on this side first which is the side that this is going to go in so that if I screw this piece up 
Uh, it wouldn't matter because I'm not putting it back in. Now we're going to flip this over and do the same thing on the other side, but hopefully this side will be a little bit easier. Hey, hey, we did it! Hooray! We're going to take this and we're going to put it in this way so that the big hole is facing out. I'm going to push it in and this is going to be the side that the sling swivel is going to go into so just make sure when you're doing this. If you're right-handed it's going to go on the left side of the stock. If you're left-handed, sorry, uh, it's going to go on the other side. <laughs> All right, now that you have this inserted, you're going to want to use the shortest one, and I'll tell you why. If you don't use the shortest one, if you look on the inside of this insert, there is a line right here, and if it is too long when it goes through the other end, you won't be able to click this all the way in the hole on the other side. So it has to be the shortest screw so that when you tighten it all the way, you don't have any clearance issues, if you know what I mean. Now, if you have a socket set that will fit on the other side in the hole, that's great. My socket set is too fat to do that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna take this Allen key here. I'm gonna put it in on one side. And then on the other side, I'm gonna take this nut and I'm going to very carefully <laughs> Uh, push this in here so it'll it'll fall just perfect. I'll get my screwdriver, position it perfectly. There we go. Now I'm going to take the screwdriver and I'm going to put it in here so that I'm holding it in place while I'm turning. This, in essence, is as close as I can get to having something that's the right size, but I'm basically just wedging it on one of the flats of the nut, and then I'm turning the Allen key on the other side. All right, now that we have our nut in place, we have the screw or bolt in place, that is going to clear because that's the shortest one, and there's not gonna be any issue there. We're gonna use our prettiest of these two, and it has to go in a specific way. There's a little tab here and a little tab here. So we're gonna line up those tabs. We'll keep this little spot down here. And I'm just gonna push it in. And then with any luck, it will click into place. Let's see what happens. All right, we did it. Now we'll look at the other side. And yes, in fact, we do have our QD point on this side. So we're gonna go ahead and test it out now. Let's go. All right, so here it is all slung up. As you can see, I am hands-free and it's not falling off, so that's good. I guess we did the install right. One thing to note, though, about this sling in particular, this is a Haley Strategic D3 SLK sling, and as you can see, it is way too short for this gun. It was specifically cut down for a shorter gun, so I'm going to have to get another sling for this. This is just the only one I had lying around at the time of putting this together. So it's gonna be kind of awkward as I'm using it, but I did notice a couple things that I was surprised about. So here we have it uh, where it's over the back of the stock, which is traditionally how I would run like ARs. And it's working all right, I guess. This side saddle is pretty much what is resting on my body and then the stock is resting up here. And then everything else is off my body. So it does kind of help keep the barrel away from your feet and outward, which is nice. And then a thing that I thought I would not like was having this sling able to rotate 360 degrees in the back. I thought that was going to be a problem because typically all of my swivels have the four detents so it can lock into a position. This one, however, does not have the holes for those detents to pop out and lock in, which I was kind of bummed about until I started playing with it. And I noticed that when I swam out, and then I went to shoulder it, it got out of the way. And then as you can see, as I put it back, this is actually a little bit moved forward, which is even more comfortable, surprisingly, than the other way I was having the shotgun set up. And again, with the side saddle, it's still keeping the barrel out and a little bit more to the left in this case. So this is a little bit more comfortable than the way I had it before, maybe partially because my sling is so tight, but if I go to shoulder it from here, 
I can shoulder it and this sling stays out of the way. It's not a problem. And it has the ability to move more and not bind me up because it has more free movement because it doesn't have those detents locking in place. Another thing that this is great for is if you are making yourself shorter, trying to go through a doorway, but you still want to have the ability to, to shoot the gun or have your sights kind of pointing in the general direction. If I go like this, the sling moves with me as I move and I can do those types of movements. So that's pretty cool. Something I wasn't expecting to like, but I do like. I should note that this particular stock is originally from Magpul for the Mossberg 590 or Mossberg 500 series of shotguns, but has since been modified by GG&G and LTT along with this foreend to fit the Beretta 1301 tactical shotgun. If you have any questions about this furniture set or anything else you see on this shotgun or the shotgun itself, be sure to click on that box at the end of this video to see the full playlist of the tactical shotgun series, home defense shotgun series, etc. And be sure to stay tuned for more content on this because this series is far from over, my friends. <laughs>